My experience has been over the years, when we, place, when we do our sinus grafts and place implants, whether it's delayed or simultaneous, if this ridge doesn't have minimum two, preferably three millimeters of thickness, of ridge thickness of the buccal plate, then with time, and select, in some cases definitely, it thins out so much, this plate, that it induces a periimplantitis um, effect. So I try to graft for some width, and what we're going to do here, we're going to overpack with our graft material, just in an attempt to get some ridge thickness. And we're going to cover this with a 30 by 40 millimeter a memlock membrane to uh, contain this graft and we'll fixate it with the implants and using our, uh, our healing abutments as I'll show you here in just a bit. So and as you'll see here, I'm going to shape it so that it will be able to be positioned and not touch any teeth because we're going to place the pellet aspect of it within a little pellet pouch it will create. So there it is into the pouch. And now I'm going to adapt it on the buckle. We may be a little long. If we are, I can certainly cut it. And before I go any further, I'm going to go ahead and place my abutments. We're going to make a little stab incision into that membrane first using a 15C blade. So I will take and um, do that on the distal and in, in the 4.6 diameter site and in the 3.8 site. And this is the 4.6 3 millimeter height heating abutment. And just come in through that small perf that we made. And there it is, secured well. And we'll do the same thing anteriorly. I'm going to just again make sure I've got a nice opening here for us. And here's the 3.8 millimeter diameter healing abutment, 3 millimeter length, and that secures it quite well, as you see there. See, we have the opportunity now to take this membrane and move it back, observe the graph, which looks kind of nice, but we can put a little bit more bone there. We certainly have it uh, perfect. And let me just, again, this is a contour type graft that will protect that plate long term. So now we just reposition the membrane. And I do have to trim it a bit. And I'm just going to go ahead and, um, and cut that. And that works real well. We're going to probably place one tack up here. But let me trim that other side first. Very nice. Let's have the auto tack. Yep, good. Perfect. So as you see here, we've placed the healing abutments in such a way that it allows for fixation of that membrane at the crest. And I do that fairly routinely when I use a membrane in this capacity. So we can do this uh, many times with, with conventional ridge augmentations as well. So um, we basically serve two purposes. One, of course, the abutment being in place for the implant, uh, in essence, a non-submerged placement of the implant. But secondly, and as importantly, is we can stabilize this membrane quite well using these healing abutments.